I realized that New Ageism is everywhere. It's in politics. Like, yeah. Well, there was that, that, that New Age lady, that explicitly New Age lady, Marianne Williamson, ran for president in 2016. She was, she was talking about astral forces and mm -hmm. all this kind of really mm -hmm. uh, specifically New Age lingo on presidential debate stages. Yeah, that's insane. I think Nancy Pelosi said something recently about Mother Earth and how powerful she is. Yeah. Nancy, who, pr who pretends to be a practicing Catholic, mm -hmm. though she doesn't... Uh, accept church teaching on mm -hmm. non-negotiable yeah. <laughs> central issues, right. which pretends to be at least. Right, and I was thinking in the context of even abortions, because people, it's all my body, my choice, it's my truth, mm. it's mine. There is no right or wrong, because I am the author of what's right or wrong in my life and in my body, and that is everything that New Ageism is about. And transgenderism too, right? Yes. My true self has nothing yes. to do with objective reality, yes. it's just whatever I say it is. And I've seen how kind of the culture's obsession, the culture, by the way, the culture's obsession with honestly just kind of dismantling God's order. Like, why is that? Like, there's gotta be a reason for that. And Hollywood's obsession with the devil and how Jesus Christ is the only name we blaspheme. People never scream out Buddha when they're upset. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, Buddha. Like, yeah. it's never that. Buddha, damn it. Yeah, no one <laughs> exactly. Says that. No one says that. Right. And no one gets triggered when you say anything about Muhammad. But the name Jesus Christ, yeah. people flinch. It's almost like there's something to it. You know what I mean? There, so. there, are, there is a group of people that gets a little triggered when you uh, say negative things about well, Muhammad. But broadly. Within, in a broad yeah, context. It's, you know, there's, there's one above them all that is most yeah. mocked. Um, they saw Kendrick Lamar recently with the... I, I don't think I've ever cross. seen Kendrick Lamar. I saw something on Instagram where in one of his music videos, he's like walking on water, he's like on a cross, he has a crown of thorns. Wow. Yeah. Or uh, Little Nas X, he did this, right. the whole video where he's basically having sex with the devil. Mm -hmm. And everyone said people are being extreme for that. But look, it's not extreme because this stuff gets into minds and it's yeah. just a slow drip. Well, there, there was a, a guy, he's the deputy monkeypox coordinator at the White House now. And he's taken photos of himself wearing leather pentagrams on his chest and apparently seems to have a pentagram tattoo on one of his pecs. And you have to wonder, you say, okay, if I'm the crazy one because I'm noticing this, because I'm observing these really weird specific satanic symbols, it, that guy's got to be way crazier for putting it on his body, right? How come, how come I'm the crazy one for noticing he's not the crazy one for doing it? Right. Right. It also makes me feel better that even though I thought I was an alien, I was never uh, the deputy of monkeypox. <laughs> so, <laughs> you never want to. You don't want to be least coordinating I wasn't that monkeypox. Far on. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's just everywhere. And I, I think it's really important to talk about for that reason. And a lot of people think I'm extreme. I lost, I lost a lot of friends when this mm. happened because ultimately the common denominator of our relationship was sin all practicing divination constantly together, whether it be a moon circle or Reiki or tarot cards. What's a moon circle? Um, so my obsession with astrology was really centered around my fascination with the moon. A lot of the time I just, I said in my old podcast, I was enamored with the moon um, because the new moon was always supposed to represent like new beginnings and in setting intentions. And then the full moon was always what I would say on my podcast the time when the moon is in its full illumination, so it's kind of shining a light on everything that's blocking us from our intentions that we set at the previous cycle. And so now with the full moon, we can release that. And so the moon always falls in, it might be a new moon in Aries, and so Aries is supposed to be like the sign of beginnings and initiation. So if it's a new moon in Aries, that's a really good time to start a new business venture. So it just always, it gave like a criteria for my life, sort of patterns to follow. Um, again, kind of instilling purpose in me because I felt like I didn't have any. So and just a scheme. A scheme. Okay, I do this exactly. this month and I do this Exactly, next month. this escapism. Um, so the moon circles, we would gather, me and a group of girlfriends, we would gather every new moon and every full moon and we would do just that, set intentions or release. And Th This sounds to me like witchcraft. Like a coven, is right? It a, is that what that Essentially. is? Essentially. We would never call it that because it's really interesting how... Even in the realm of New Ageism, you understand that there's 
negative energy and negative and demonic influence like you know, why is it that every time we had to do, we did Reiki, or every time we did a moon circle, every time I practiced with my crystals or my tarot, every time I did yoga, why is it you always have to pray for protection? Why is it you always have to call in an angel team? Why is it you always have to set up pillars of light around the room? Like, it's why do you have to prepare yourself for the worst with all these practices? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the same thing with psychedelics, because that's also mind alt altercation. Right. It's kind of the same thing. And you kind of have to set your intentions with that too. It's all these things that you have to be really, really particular with. You have to follow all these steps or you could do it wrong. Like sage the room because, you know, demons are, are scared of, of smudge. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and f for people now who are going to call you crazy for yeah. criticizing all this stuff, people call me crazy for saying, you know, actually people do practice witchcraft. And they say, Michael, you're crazy. What an insane thing to say. You did it. Mm -hmm. Like you did it, you, it you saw it, you participated in it. It's so again, it's one of these where I go back to why am I crazy for noticing it? But they're not crazy for doing it. They're actually doing it. Well, the Bible has the answer to that. Because Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers, and because Satan is the prince of this world. Right. And so, you know, that's something else that kind of started to wake me up to the idea that there is theistic God, specifically the Christian God, because in 2020, when um, everything went down, I was also, I was a seething liberal at the time as well. So, I mean, it's all connected. It really is because you go to an abortion rally, I guarantee that girl who's naked giving the middle finger that says, if you, my body, my choice, I guarantee you go into her bedroom, there's a mandala on her wall. like. Just what is that, by the way? It's just like a. You've seen them. They're tapestries with like the the circles with all the flowers. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have <laughs> seen that. And it's weird. Yeah. I, but I, I never knew what it was they're called. Just like, or... They're just like sacred geometry, kind of. So it's funny though when you said it, just from the sound of it, I thought, yeah, okay, I th I, I kind of get the idea of, and I'm sure she does because. People try to be conciliatory and nice and say, listen, you know, a person's religion has nothing to do with their politics, and you can be a, you can be a total demon-worshipping pagan, you know, conservative, and you can be a orthodox Christian uh, liberal. And, but in practice, I've just, that just doesn't happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's what I mean, because in 2020, when everything went down, I was, obviously, I had nothing but time on my hands when I was in quarantine. And that I hit, I hit rock bottom. Um, another flirtation with suicide in that time. But something that I did with that time was I started for the first time in my life begin to research things. Mm. And like this is when the George Floyd thing happened too. So that kind of sparked something in me where I was recognizing inconsistencies, following a lot of Candace Owens at the time. Mm. And um, it's actually when I learned about the Daily Wire around that time. And so I got curious about things and why the world is the way it is and what's going on in the government, what's going on in Hollywood. Um, oh, maybe Trump isn't crazy, mean, orange man after all, you know? And I got really hungry for the truth. And so I started to be more vocal about that online, like exposing things as I saw them come up and sharing really unpopular narratives but true narratives and that thirst for truth you know i've always been someone who asks questions i've always been someone who wants to know more it's it's what led me to self-help i mm -hmm. wanted to get better it's what led me to new ageism i wanted answers i wanted healing and my when my politics began to shift my spirituality did kind of shift as well where i understood you know everyone's obsessed with satan for some reason like, what's that about? If Satan is their obsession, there's got to be a reason. Be oh, because there's a counter to that. It's actually God. Huh. And so there's something there. And this is when I began to understand that there's a spiritual warfare. So understanding biblical concepts, but still with the backdrop of Hinduism, where I thought it was just duality. It's just the state of the universe is good and evil. And it's kind of like a battleground for who's going to win, you know? Is it going to be this 5D ascension that I talked about earlier, or is it going to be like we just 
get worse and worse and worse because the the evil energy, and that's the word I would use, the evil energy was winning, whereas the good energy was losing. Um, because I didn't subscribe to what the Bible says, you know, at the time. So I at least began to understand things a little differently, understand that God was there. And that, again, truth search I tell people a lot that if you are hungry for the truth, you're going to land on Jesus eventually. Yeah. Because he's truth. Right. You can you can go down all these different paths, but you're going to find inconsistencies everywhere else. And yeah. that's all I did for 10 years. I, t I took the long way too. You know, I was an atheist for about 10 years. Atheist kind of weakened to a sort of agnostic by the end of that. Mm. And so I, I attest to that. A lot of parallels actually. To, I mean, I never uh, was a part of any, you know, Covens worshiping the moon or anything, but I got into some pretty weird stuff and, and went down weird intellectual paths. And I would say yeah. basically it's kind of thirteen to twenty three. That was my real period of apostasy, atheism, agnosticism. Uh, it. I remember when my you mentioned your grandmother dying. That was a big moment when you started to explore these things. I remember my mother died. I was seventeen years old, and I was so. I, I so wanted to talk to her mm -hmm. that I Googled it. I said, how do you talk to dead yeah. people? And I, knew you, I know that you can't talk to dead people, or that's what I thought then. Now I wonder if you can talk to dead people, or at the very least, you can talk to demons masquerading as dead people, right. as has been attested to throughout all of human history. And, but I, I started Googling it, and it's, it's very tempting. When you're, when you're so vulnerable and you're mm -hmm. so desperate for something, it, you'll, you'll reach at anything. I mean, you'll yeah. go to any kind of crazy length at all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I... On that particular path, I, I never didn't go nearly as far as you did down it. Uh, I probably just gave up after not being able to, you know, re hear spiritual, you know, voices and things like that. But you can really get into some really weird stuff. The fact that you mentioned this obsession with Satan is so interesting to me because I, 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 sometimes you'll, well, if I point out, hey, why is that government official wearing a pentagram? Oh, Michael, that's no big deal. It's just a symbol. Yeah. I think, well, right, but symbol, the whole point of a symbol is that it symbolizes something. Right. And so that, that's a symbol of the devil, mm -hmm. which seems to me to imply that, I, that there is such a thing as a devil, or at the very least that this guy thinks that there's such a thing as the devil. And either right. way, it's pretty weird that he's wearing that symbol, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And people are just very quick to write it off. Just like now, you know, there's it's it's seeping into into schools and into kids' curriculums and even into their playtime. There's like yoga Barbies and things like that. And um, my one friend works at Target, and she was showing me pictures. There's it's like My Little Pony witch thing. Like you know, cast your spells. It just seems it seems so innocent. Yeah. But it's not, and that's the point. And again, it's that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. It's a deception.